In this episode, we're integrating MetaHuman with our third-person character, fully equipped with Foot IK and all of our gameplay abilities. Hey guys, today we're integrating a MetaHuman directly onto the UEFI Mannequin third-person character. This tutorial comes straight out of Unreal Engine's official documentation, so if something isn't working right based on this episode, most likely that means something changed with MetaHuman. So I encourage you to check out the official documentation, which I've got linked in the description below. But the reason we're doing this at this particular point in this series is that we're about to pivot and focus directly on AI. And you've heard me say in previous episodes that our current goal is to get a gameplay prototype up and running. And so so that means we need an AI character, specifically an opponent that we could play against. So in this episode, instead of mapping directly to our third person character blueprint, we're actually going to create a child blueprint class of that blueprint, and we're going to map the metahuman character to that. But regardless, you could follow this exact same process to map directly to third person character, and it'll work just fine. But if you're following this series, the metahuman character that you choose, that's going to become our adversary. Adversary, opponent, evil twin, Take your pick. But when I was conceptualizing who the adversary would be in this gameplay prototype, the answer was clear. The greatest adversary, it's always yourself. So here are the key concepts for this episode. All of these revolve around two things. They're retargeting our metahuman skeleton back to our third person character mannequin skeleton. And then the second part of this is how do we optimize the look and feel of that metahuman character? So let's get to it. So here's our chosen metahuman creator character, and I've named him Cornelius. And as you can see, he's just a blend of a few different folks. I did a very little bit of sculpting around the nose, the lips, sticking out the ears a little bit. But for all intents and purposes, he is ready to go. So the final finishing touches, we need to give him a beard. You guys voted almost unanimously for the goatee. Not that I blame you, but I was kind of partial to the mustache myself. So we'll give him that beard over to mustache. We'll give him the chin strap mustache. And now now we just got to go into Unreal Engine and using Quixel Bridge, we'll bring in our MetaHuman. So for this, I actually recommend creating a brand new level just for bringing in the MetaHuman because even for my RTX 3080 Ti, it's pretty performance intensive. So to do that, we're going to go to File, New Level, and I'm just going to do a basic level here. All right, so we're ready to bring in our MetaHuman. So I'll go right up to Quixel Bridge. And then from within Bridge, make sure you log in and then you go to your MetaHumans over here on the left. And I'm just gonna navigate over to my MetaHumans. And then we'll go ahead and select Cornelius here and not highest quality. I strongly recommend not doing the highest quality. I'd only use that for cinematics. And you could try medium quality if you have a beast of a machine, but actually I recommend we're gonna stick with low quality because remember, we're just using this character for testing purposes. And even at low quality, MetaHumans overall quality for a character is quite high. So we're gonna stick with low quality. And then we add. And we're going to get this importing common assets, importing all this stuff. This is going to take a little while. And this is the performance intensive stuff that I was talking about. The other thing you'll see are a bunch of warnings on the right hand side. You're going to need to enable missing when those pop up and then restart the engine. Now, when you restart, you see that it's still preparing shaders and you might want to consider getting into a blank level again, just to let it load those shaders because a couple of times my GPU crashed. I think with the MetaHuman as low quality, there's a lower likelihood of that happening, but it still could happen. So I'll just go into a basic level that we're not going to save. So once we're done loading shaders, then we can go back to our content drawer and you'll find your MetaHuman under the MetaHumans folder here. And we've got a common folder that's universal to all MetaHumans and then we have Cornelius. And I'm just gonna pop into my Cornelius blueprint here. And if you see in the viewport, you got your MetaHuman right here. And then when you zoom out, his hair disappears, totally normal. You're ready to go for this next part. And for this next part, I am literally going step by step through the runtime animation retargeting. And if you're unfamiliar with the term retargeting, so retargeting is the process of reusing animations between characters that use the same skeleton assets, but may have different proportions, but use a different skeleton asset, but it shares a similar bone hierarchy. And that's what allows us to retarget between the metahuman skeleton and our third person character Manny skeleton. And specifically, the reason we're doing runtime animation retargeting is that's what allows us to keep our IK setup in our anim graph. And that's this piece right here. The tutorial uses IK rig leg placement functionality and your animated metahuman's legs will conform dynamically to the terrain. So like I said on the intro, if anything we're about to do does not work for you, please consult this specific documentation because it might have updated because metahuman's fairly new still. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna exit out of this. We're gonna go back to to our content drawer, I'm going to go back to our content folder core. 
And this is where I've got my third person character. So just navigate to whatever folder has your third person character, because what we're going to do is we're going to create a child blueprint class of this third person character. Now, if you just want to substitute the metahuman directly for your third person character, you could just follow along right on your third person character blueprint. But even if you do that, I suggest creating a backup of this blueprint just so that you have a pristine copy in case the metahuman messes up anything. But here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to right click, we're going to do a new blueprint class, and I can search for the parent class of third person character. So BP third person character at the bottom. So I select that select and I'm going to rename this BP adversary AI character. So let's double click into that. And so now let's go back to our content drawer, back to content, back to metahumans and into our character. We'll open up this too. I shouldn't have told you to close it. And then over to the viewport tab. So the first thing we got to do is we got to select everything under our root component here, everything from body down to beard. So I'm just going to hold shift select. It's going to select everything right click copy and then we're going to go back to our adversary ai character and then underneath mesh so i'm going to right click and paste and actually even if you select the mesh it's probably going to do it just like this just like it did for me but now i can select all those and drag them over to the mesh and when you do that all of them become wildly disorganized and our pants and our arms are floating way up there so first let's reorganize our hierarchy here and then we'll straighten all this out so we got to put our legs under our body we got to put our torso under our body so i got to scroll down a little bit torso under the body face also under the body feet are under the body and then all of our hair assets here are all under the face. So I'll drag that to face, drag to face, drag to face. You get the idea. So it doesn't matter what order these components are listed as long as you've got the right hierarchy here. So then we're going to select the body, torso, legs, face, and feet. And then over here on the right for location and rotation, I'm going to change these all to zero. And you could just reset with the arrows on the right like I did. And then we see our character. He's kind of sitting right where our third person mannequin is. So for the next step, we got to select our body component here. And then for our skeletal mesh that's listed under the body, we have to navigate to it via the folder here. And then with this open, this is our skeletal mesh asset. So we can right click, we can create, we're going to create a new animation blueprint. And I'm going to call it very similar. So it's going to be ABP underscore adversary AI character. And then I'm going to take that animation blueprint. We're going to drag it over to our core folder, move here, whatever folder you want. And then let's double click to go into that. So it's a really simple way to retarget all of our animations in real time. So all we got to do is we got to drag out a pin here and say retarget pose from mesh and unreal engine already has a retarget asset that comes with this. So we can just select from this dropdown and we're going to choose the RTG mannequin because we're going off of the mannequin skeleton and then compile and save our animation blueprint. But there's a few more steps that we need to get this up and running. So let's go back to BP Cornelius or whatever your original metahuman blueprint was. And then we have to get this enable master pose function. So if you right click on that and say copy, and then we have to go back to our new blueprint. And then what we can do is right click on functions and paste function. And we can keep it enable master pose. That's just fine. One thing to note, if you're doing this on 5.1 or at least shortly after 5.1 has been released, I noticed some problems with this enable master pose when I hit compile and save. I had to switch out the references to a skeletal mesh asset with this get skinned asset. And then also I had to get the post process instance and get class to connect this up to the is valid class. So if you get those errors, you could just use what I have here. Now I'm hoping this function automatically gets updated in 5.1 pretty soon. So this might not be an issue for you. But now back to our previously scheduled programming. But that's not all we got some more stuff to copy. So if we go back to our Cornelius, our original metahuman blueprint, make sure to go into the construction script. And in the construction script, we got to copy these three. So feet, legs, torso, enable master pose, all six of those nodes and control C to copy, go back over to our adversary AI character into the construction script. And I'm going to keep the parent construction script here because there's stuff on our regular third person character that I do want to keep, but it's up to you if you keep that. And then I'm going to paste directly adjacent to this and connect it up. Next, we have to go over to our body component and over on the right here under animation mode, make sure this is set to use animation blueprint. And now we need to select our animation blueprint. So whatever you named here, ABP adversary AI character, it's exactly what I've got. So ABP adversary AI. So if we go back to our viewport, we still have our old mesh. So for that, I've got to go to the mesh component right here, and then I can come down or actually I'll just search for visible. And if you search for visible and uncheck that, great. And then compile and save. But there's one more setting under mesh that's really common to forget. It's this visibility based anim tick option. So instead of just always tick pose, we have to do always tick pose and refresh bones. And the reason we have to do that is because we are updating the pose constantly 
based on this. And then we should be seeing our character once we compile and save, it should be animated based on that general idle animation we got. Now for this last part, if you're following along with this series completely, you don't actually need to do this, but if you just wanna make MetaHuman your third person character personally, so that's what we're gonna do now. I'm just gonna show you how to do that. So we have to go into our third person game mode right here. Yours might be under a different folder, but find your third person game mode. And the only thing you need to change is this default pawn class. So we're gonna change from BP third person character to our BP adversary AI character. So I could actually play as the adversary character, compile and save. So I'll minimize this, we'll hit play, and we've got our guy with all animations. Now his hair is doing funky stuff, but let's address that next. The other thing I'm just gonna test right now is we're gonna go back to our original level because I wanna test, make sure all of our different gameplay abilities still work with this brand new character. So I'll go into third person, into maps, third person map. Now the one thing I wanna make clear is there's still plenty of stuff that we need to update on this character to really make him a playable character, but we're gonna do that in subsequent episodes. But let's just test it out, make sure all the basics work right now. All right, so you can pick up all the abilities. Let's test the air boost. Yep, he's got pretty much everything there. <clears throat> he's still taking damage. So far, so good. He looks kinda of scary from far away, huh? So let's adjust the hair and the LODs a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do, just so we can experiment with the LODs and the hair in real time, I'm just gonna drag our character into the world. And what I realize is we're gonna get all the cameras and all that set up, and we probably don't want all that. So just for hair, just for aesthetic stuff, we're gonna take our metahuman from our original folder, this guy right here, drag it into the world, because all the settings for hair, they're gonna work the same way. So there's really two things here that I wanna fix. So the first is that his hair just disappears when zooming out, because what's happening is the hair's trying to switch over to hair cards, and we don't currently have hair cards for our character. So for this, we gotta navigate back to our content drawer, and we specifically have to go into the male hair or female hair if you have a female character. And then from there into the hair folder, and then we have to modify our groom asset. So in my case, it's this hair s messy and might be named something different for you. So we'll go into that. And then we can see our hair up close and personal. Now, if I start zooming out, my hair disappears. And the reason for that is if we go to our LODs here, most of the LODs are not active. So LOD2, not visible, LOD3, etc. Now, the way most hair assets work, especially in AAA games, you have these strands really up close, then it moves to what's called cards, and then finally it uses a mesh all the way at the end. So luckily, metahumans come with the mesh automatically, and of course they come with the strand hair, but what they don't come with is the cards. So a really easy fix for this, but this is performance intensive, is that we can just change each of our LODs that are using cards, we can change those over to strands, and then the strands will show at a further distance. But that is performance intensive, like I said, because the strands obviously are most detailed. And then once we change that, we'll make it visible. I'm gonna do that for the other LODs as well. So this will change the strands, mark it visible, and keep going down the list. But when we get to meshes, so it does come with a mesh, and that's basically like a skull cap of hair around our player's head. Really, we should only be seeing that at a very far distance. And you could see that with the screen size here. When the hair is literally 3% of the screen, tiny, then it's a skull cap mesh. So I'm just gonna mark that visible. Same thing with this one, same thing with this one. And so now when I zoom out, I should keep seeing our hair into the distance. You'll see a transformation occur when I go pretty far away. You'll see it just kind of change, but that's when it's changing over to a mesh. So let's save that and then let's go ahead and test with our character. So we can get up really close, see the hair up close and personal. Yep, looks good. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Somewhere along the line, it switches over to mesh hair. We don't even notice it because it's so far away. Looking good. And the same thing with the goatee, right? So I noticed that the goatee just disappears. His mustache sticks around. I don't know what it is about mustaches. They just stick around. So if we go to the content drawer, go into the goatee, same kind of thing here. So we got to go over to LODs, switch visible and over to strands. Same thing for the next one, strands. And then finally we keep it at mesh and that's fine. Same thing there. Just make sure every LOD is set to visible. Save that. And then we can zoom out. We don't notice his goatee disappearing. Looks pretty good to me. So the last two things I'd like to fix are the eyebrows and the mustache. So for that, we'll go back in the male hair into hair and same kind of thing. So we'll go into eyebrows first, switch these from cards over to strands. Cards over to strands, cards over to strands. Save that. And over to eyelashes, mark it visible over to strands, visible over to strands, visible over to strands. And also make it visible for the meshes here. Check, check, and check. Save that. And now when we play, when I'm up close, it's strands. When I zoom out, still there. 
The very last thing to get all of our pieces working together properly, let's go over to BP Cornelius or BP whatever your metahuman character is, and we have to copy the LOD sync component. So right click, copy, and go over to our BP adversary AI character and all the way at the top, right click, paste. And once that's in, just compile and save. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna sync up all of our components here to use the same LOD. And so now I'm gonna close out all of these. We're gonna do one last test. And before this, my frame rate was pretty close to 60, and we see it dropping slightly, but we get a very close, intense level of detail up close. So yeah, I dropped our frame rate by about 10, just about 3 milliseconds, but zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, looking good. And then all the way at the furthest distance, we get mesh for the hair. So you see that kind of flickering in between the two. So that wraps up our episode for today, but we're going to keep our metahuman as our third person character for at least one more episode, and it's because I want to work on metahuman facial animations. So I hope to see you there in the next episode.